Mr. Secretary, thank you. I'm going to scoot over to Capitol Hill only because uh, the uh, the Speaker of the House is going to trump you for a moment. He's speaking live for the opening of the uh, pro forma Congress. Let's listen to John Boehner. That can pass the Congress. And with that, I'll be happy to answer some questions. Your Well, when the president and I have been able to come to an agreement, there's been no problem in getting it passed uh, here in the House. Uh, you outlined your goal of not having tax rates go up as part of this solution to uh, this issue uh, in your speech the other day. But we did lay out a deficit goal. The president talked about primary balance by 2017. What is the deficit goal that you have in mind as part of this effort? Well, clearly, uh, uh, the deficit uh, is a drag on our economy, uh, and we can't continue to spend money that we don't have. Uh, I, I, I don't want to box myself in. I don't want to box anybody else in. Uh, I think uh, it's important uh, for us to come to an agreement with the president, but this is his opportunity to lead. Mr. Speaker? Oh, um, oh, oh. Nope, 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 nope. You violated the rules. <laughs> Disqualified. Yes, sir. Notably, the other day, you made a point of putting new revenue on, at least on the table. Could you give us an idea, any more examples of where you're going with that? Because if tax rates are not on the table, are you talking about going after deductions? Uh, it's clear that uh, there are a lot of special interest loopholes in the tax code, both corporate and personal. Uh, it's also clear uh, that, uh, that there are all kinds of deductions, some of which make sense, others don't. Uh, and by lowering rates and cleaning up the tax code, uh, we know that we're going to get more economic growth. Uh, it'll bring jobs back to America. It'll bring more revenue. Uh, we also know that if we clean up the code and make it simpler, uh, the tax code will be more efficient. The current code only collects about 85 uh, percent of what's due the government. Uh, and uh, it's clear that if you have a, a simpler, uh, cleaner, a fairer tax code, uh, that efficiency of uh, effectiveness and efficiency of the tax code increases exponentially. Jake. More, obviously the president won re-election. The Republicans were basically unable to get any seat in the Senate. Uh, more people voted for Democrats in the House than Republicans. Why do you have any leverage whatsoever? Well, there's a Republican majority uh, here in the House. Uh, the American people re-elected the Republican majority. Uh, and I'm proud of the fact that uh, our team uh, in a very difficult year, uh, was able uh, to maintain our majority. Uh, there are a lot of races uh, out there outstanding, uh, but uh, it's clear that uh, as a political party, we've got some work to do. And I think the, uh, the principles of our party are sound. You know, we believe in individual responsibility. We believe in empowering our citizens. Uh, we believe uh, in, the, in the American dream and want that dream for everyone. Uh, but how we talk about uh, uh, who we are as a party and uh, is uh, clearly conversations are underway and will continue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on a different issue, uh, do, you have a, do you plan to have a vote next week on the Russia trade and human rights legislation? Well, you'll, have to ask, you'll have to ask Mr. Cantor. I don't schedule the floor. Mr. Speaker, uh, is it fair to say you could use the raising of the debt limit in early 2013 as leverage on the fiscal cliff? It's an issue that's going to have to be addressed sooner rather than later. Mr. Speaker, uh, following on, on Jake's question, um, a number of exit polls um, Tuesday night said that there were an overwhelming number of Americans, 60 percent or more, who favored raising taxes on the wealthiest Americans. Will you be guided by that principle at all when you sit down to, to do this deal? Listen, the problem with raising tax rates on the wealthiest Americans is that more than half of them uh, are small business owners. Uh, we know from Ernst & Young, 700,000 jobs uh, would be destroyed. Uh, we also know uh, that it would slow down our economy. Uh, it, it, this is about the, the number one issue in the election was about the economy and jobs. 
Uh, everyone wants to get our economy moving again. Everyone wants to get more Americans back to work again. Raising tax rates uh, will slow down our ability to create the jobs that everyone says they want. Jonathan. Speaker, what are you looking for in terms of uh, on the entitlement side? Are, you, are we talking about restraining the growth of Social Security and Medicare? Are you looking for changes in both those programs? Uh, listen, we've got we're spending a trillion dollars more than what we take in. You can't continue to do that. Um, this is year two uh, of a 25 year demographic bubble uh, that uh, wasn't like anyone couldn't see it coming. 10,000 baby boomers like me retiring every day. 70,000 a week is three and a half million this year. And this is just the second year uh, of the 25 year uh, baby boom bubble. And it's not like there's money in Social Security or Medicare. Uh, it, 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 this has to be dealt with. So everything. Everything on the revenue side and on the spending side has to be looked at. Um, no, yes. no, I wasn't calling on you. My goodness. <laughs> I'm not blind. Uh, uh, immigration. <laughs> what is on the table? No, I'm, the, the young lady here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I just wanted to go back to your comments last night on immigration. Um, you spoke optimistically about the chance of getting immigration reform. Um, does that, uh, when you said comprehensive immigration reform, are you endorsing a pathway to citizenship? Well, I'm not talking about a 3,000 page bill. What I'm talking about is a common sense, step-by-step -step approach uh, that would secure our borders, allow us to enforce the laws, and fix a broken immigration system. Uh, but again, uh, on an issue this big, the president has to lead. Uh, I think uh, members on both sides of the aisle uh, want to resolve this issue. The president, the president's going to have to lead here. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into any of the details. Uh, of how you would get there, it's just time to get the, the job done. It, it sounds like you're talking about setting up a framework for next year to do tax reform and entitlement. But now you need to deal with the sequester, the AMT, the, the, the Medicare problem, and you've spoken, or, or there's this concept of a down payment. Can you go into a little bit more about what you expect that to be? No, I really would rather not do that because I don't want to limit uh, the options that would be available to me or limit the options that might be available uh, uh, to the White House. Uh, there are a lot of ways to get there. And, uh, and I don't really want to preclude uh, anyone who might have a good idea about uh, how we move forward. But it's clear, it, it, it's clear that we've got to fix our broken tax system and we've got to deal with our spending problem. Mr. But is the core principle you would need to pay for turning off the sequester immediately, or could you uh, be paying part of a bigger deal? Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, does calling it tax reform give you a better way of selling it to your caucus in terms of increasing revenues versus something that's <clears throat> revenue neutral, which is a, a mantra we've heard in the past? Well, we've had this uh, discussion uh, over the course of the last year and a half. As you all know, and the president and I uh, were attempting to deal with this problem a year and a half ago, uh, that there were revenues on the table. And you can produce revenue and put revenue on the table uh, through fixing <coughs> our broken tax system, uh, getting our economy going again, and getting more Americans back to work. Easier to Thanks, sell, everybody. Well, there you have it. There you have it. Uh, Speaker Boehner walking out after fielding a few questions and just making a couple of remarks, which, by the way, you missed because we had the Florida Secretary of State on live, and that was very important. Uh, but we will have those comments for you. But remember this phrase, fixing the broken tax system. That may be the new mantra of the Speaker as we try to figure out how to get these two parties together um, to avoid the fiscal cliff. Raising revenue without raising taxes. Fixing the broken tax system. You know who's really good at this? Two shot, <laughs> that one. Christine Roman. So coming up out of the break, we're going to hear some of okay. those comments, and then I'm going to get you to weigh in on what you thought of some of those key buzzwords. Great. I saw you nodding back in a moment.